All right, here we are at the end of the day. If we could just get one more round of applause for the amazing astronauts. It's not every day. It's not every day that you get to see five astronauts all together, and they are really so gracious to share their time with us. So thank you guys again. You've stuck with us the entire day. Thank you so much. We are incredibly honored to see the room still packed and full, and we'd love to be able to transition you quickly and delightfully from this to the reception that we're going to do after. And I'll take just a few minutes to tell you a little bit about the team behind today. So there's now over 50 student staff and faculty involved in the Space Exploration Initiative, and I'd really love for you guys to get to know a little bit about their story. Two quick fun facts about today. We've had thousands of people tune in via the live stream. So if anybody's watching via the live stream, hello, thank you for coming along with us on the journey. And we also are only day two of MIT Space Week. And so last, uh, yesterday, MIT Aero Astro kicked off the Apollo 50 plus 50 event. And tomorrow, I want to have everybody who's here, please come back to this floor, sixth floor of the Media Lab for Sloan's New Space Age event as well, New Space Age Conference. So, story behind the Space Initiative, what are we and how do we come to be? The mission of the Space Exploration Initiative is to be a launch pad across the entire Media Lab. That was the original goal. And the Media Lab is a really special place because you have synthetic neurobiologists sitting right next to you and working with artists and architects and data scientists and robotics engineers. And our idea was how do we empower all of those different verticals and all of those different disciplines outside of just traditional aerospace engineering, and I say that as someone who is trained as an engineer and physics, physicist, how do we empower all of those different fields to deploy their work in space, to take their domain expertise up into a space environment? And the way that we're doing it, our tagline that we like to think about is building our sci-fi space future. So if Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and NASA and ESA and others are working on the rockets to get us there, wherever there may be, Mars, Moon, or beyond, we are working on the human, and we sometimes say a little cheekily, the robotic lived experience of space. What are the suite of tools, technologies, and human experiences as we're at this cusp of interplanetary civilization? Our mission in three succinct parts, to democratize access to space. So we do this in a couple of ways. One is by things like today, bringing in lots of different perspectives and narratives and voices in the future of space exploration. Another is through outreach. We really prioritize reaching the next generation of space artists and space tinkerers and space engineers, and so we do quite a lot of outreach work with our community, both here locally and nationwide. We're hoping to revolutionize the future of space. So this means taking a new and different approach, something that's special to the Media Lab's magic sauce and now in our amazing partnerships across MIT with Aero Astro, Earth and Planetary Sciences and others, to take not just the iterative next step for space technology, but the crazy, risky, provocative, might not get funded anywhere else projects, and we can have a home for them here and really begin to explore that sci-fi space future. And then the final point is to realize we really are building these prototypes. This is not simply a design house or an envisioning exercise. We bring in designers and we bring in artists and we pair them with scientists and engineers that can help to realize and get these prototypes out in space environments, microgravity flights, suborbital launches, ISS and beyond. This is the fantastic team behind all of this. So you heard from Joey Ito and Maria Zuber the very first thing this morning. They welcomed us off. Joe Paradiso, I'll be calling up in just a minute because I want you guys to all have a chance to meet Joe. Shing and Maggie, Sands, Devorah, Avery, too many to name. Um, and also just want to do a special shout out to David Newman, who you also heard from earlier, who has helped us really build bridges to MIT Aero Astro, on whose shoulders we stand for the amazing achievements that that department has pioneered across MIT for history and future of spaceflight. The ecosystem, who are we beyond just this particular team here at MIT? The 50 plus graduate students, staff and faculty, of course, but also 80 member companies that bring really unusual and sometimes uh, unexpected interests in the future of space. This is part of the Media Lab community. Collaborations now across MIT, and we also work very closely with NASA, ESA, the European Space Agency, and JAXA, in addition to a host of new space age startup companies. This is an artist's render of 12 of the different Space Exploration Initiative projects. Well, like I say, it's a little bit of a where's Waldo of everybody's particular research. You see space food and agriculture, 3D printing, mental health and well-being, thinking about the future of astronaut health and flourishing, virtual reality, entertainment. And if this is the artist's depiction, these are the projects. 
These are six of the projects that you just saw in that render, but these are the actual prototypes that we launched back in 2017 on our inaugural parabolic flight. You have here our amazing arts curator, you'll hear from, from a moment, in a moment, thinking about spacesuits and mobility and orbit weaver project. An incredible contribution to thinking about founding new culture in space, building musical instruments. That's Sans Fish and uh, Nicole Houllier thinking about how do you design a musical instrument that could only be played in microgravity. And the stories go on for all of the different projects. New to the team this year, who you'll also meet briefly um, in a moment, is Maggie Koblenz, who's brought an expertise in space food and thinking about the design and experience of food. We're now looking at closed loop food technology, so algae caviar, which is her creation and invention, packaging, recycling polyethylene for the packaging of space food that could then be extruded in a zero gravity 3D printer. And we're beginning now to also push out to a larger scale across the initiative. What's the infrastructure required to really realize the vision of thousands or millions of people living and working in space, part of it is, is scalability, the ability to have modular architecture, the ability to have on-demand space assets, CubeSats that you can rent time on, just like we assume now that we can rent time on a cloud computing cluster. And even farther beyond, oh, can I get one back, Steve? Thank you. And even farther beyond just low Earth orbit and space tourism, we now have a fantastic postdoc in the initiative, affiliated with the initiative, Valentina Sumini, thinking about habitats on the surface of Mars and beyond, rigorously designed for thermal radiation, et cetera, and a fantastic award-winning proposal. You're not a real space program if you're not actively launching into space, so these are the ways that we get our work out there. We now do an annually chartered parabolic flight, so 15 different research projects, 25 different people come with us. The next one is coming up in May, so stay tuned for some of the research results. The International Space Station, we hope to be on there with six different projects by the end of this year, so keep your fingers crossed for good manifest timing. We are launching with Blue Origin later this year, really, really excited to be part of the early crew who, not human crew, but research crew that's going to be on their suborbital um, reusable New Shepard craft. And we also, to get back to that notion of democratizing space for the next generation, deeply prioritize STEAM, and as David said earlier this morning, STEAMed. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, art, and design. Got the vowels mixed up, but STEAMed. And the idea here with our local program is to give these students, and then also scaling nationally the curriculum, an opportunity to design the entire life cycle of a spacecraft mission. So we, along with MIT Aero Astro Star Lab, Carrie Cahor, who you guys heard from earlier today, are mentoring the students as they design, build, test, fly, and gather data from their own climate sensing CubeSat. The hope being that this is a program we could scale internationally eventually through low cost, dropping costs of CubeSat hardware and the availability of space launches to give the next generation a sense of investment in the future health of their planet. They themselves can take data and understand climate change and understand the science behind what's happening. And where are we going with all of this between the research projects here, our collaborations elsewhere, and the outreach? We realized recently that there is a moment now at the cusp of interplanetary civilization again, and it's time to found a real-life Starfleet Academy. Does anybody recognize Starfleet Academy from Star Trek? It was a notion of this is where the space cadets go to learn. This is where you become a space doctor, a space psychologist, a, maybe a space artist in the future. And it was also the place where the Starship Enterprise was built. It was the place where the rigorous technology was made. And we have an opportunity with MIT, but also with a global community that we are trying to build through events like these to think about founding this now. This is a moment to really think about founding a real life Starfleet Academy and in a diverse and inclusive one in the same original spirit of the show. And so with that, I'd like to ask Maggie Koblenz, Xing Liu, and Joe Paradiso to come up. This brings us a little bit to why are we here today. We're here for Beyond the Cradle. This mission patch was designed for us by Sana Sharma. I don't know if she's still in the audience, but thank you very much for an amazing mission patch. The axes, if you haven't already seen the explanation, is for art, science, design, and engineering. And that's really the spirit of the Media Lab and the Space Initiative trying to unify those all together. I want to say thank you to these three because they are the maestros <laughs> behind a lot essentially everything that you have seen today. Xing Lu, our arts curator, who pulled together the entire arts panel that you saw earlier, fantastic group of people we were so lucky to have come, and the entire gallery, and does this not just today, but the entire year for us. So thank you so much, Xing. <laughs> I'm gonna save you for last.
Maggie Koblenz, the newest addition to our team, and I have to say MVP in every possible way. I'm sure every single speaker in this room knows her name because you have been wrangling and doing just an amazing job while also still being a researcher in your own right and leading the space food research to us. So thank you so much. <laughs> And last but not least, my PhD advisor, Joe Paradiso, who supports me in all of these different things, lets me have some leeway to try to build space at the Media Lab, and is also a fantastic personal mentor and faculty mentor for the entire initiative. So thank you so much. Thank you. I want to say a couple other quick things. One, I really want to thank the event staff behind all of this. As you might imagine, there's an incredible Media Lab and Steve Sargent's crew in the back and others who make the event possible. And finally, can we also get another round of applause for all of the speakers that you've heard from today? And what we'd like to leave you with as you think about next steps after Beyond the Cradle, is our Space Initiative team, all of these speakers, and all of you can be part of our growing community. We really hope that you stay in touch throughout the year. We hope you come back next year. We hope you help us build this Starfleet Academy movement for democratizing access to space and fundamentally prototyping and building our sci-fi space future. Because, as Katie Coleman so beautifully put it in the very last panel, space is out there for all of us. Thank you very much. And enjoy the reception. Thank you.